Oh no. Host system management bus controller not enabled. Not like that's gonna stop me. <laughs> I don't know what we're doing. We're stuck on this default wallpaper now. Dang it, I cursed the operating system by talking about the wallpapers. Gabe Newell, you did this. God damn it. Oh. <laughs> Just press enter. Everything fixes Ubuntu when you press enter. Good day folks, Jordan here, and welcome to another software overview video. Today's video is going to be unusually short in the sense that we're looking at Ubuntu 10.10 .10 Maverick Meerkat. Now, of course, to no surprise by many people, at least so far in this series, you know, with regards to the series, there's really not been much in the way of .10 releases, except for 9.10. Ubuntu 9.10 had quite a bit going for it, actually, but 10.10, not so much. Really, the biggest Easter egg is in the naming and when it was released to the public, which is pretty funny, actually. We'll get into that here in a minute. But there is so little in the way of new features when it comes to Ubuntu 10.10 .10 that we're going to try to keep this video as short as we possibly can while still being in-depth to the you know, for the most part. And uh, yeah, that's about all I can really do until the next video. So the few new things that were introduced with Ubuntu 10.10 .10 were a new font known as the Ubuntu font. That's really creative, isn't it? But that was the new font. It was introduced and it was the set system default, which I think they still do that today in modern Ubuntu, come to think of it. Even the new one, which is going to be coming out here pretty soon, it's going to be coming out of beta, which I have downloaded the beta. I will be trying it off camera probably won't be making a video about it. I'll just wait till the final release comes out unless people really want to see it, but I doubt that you'd want to see the beta. You just won't want to see the final release. And by the time you're watching this, the final will have already been released. But I digress. Another difference was that the F-Spot Photo Manager was replaced with a program known as Shotwell, which I believe is still used in modern day Ubuntu derivatives. If you want to download it, you can still go into the terminal and do a sudo app get install shot well and it'll still install on many Ubuntu derivatives and work just fine. Another change was the Unity desktop environment was introduced with the Ubuntu Netbook Edition. It wasn't called Ubuntu Netbook Remix anymore at this point. They're calling it the Ubuntu Netbook Edition. And I believe the 10.10 .10 release was the last one to have ever been released before they just put development strictly on just the regular desktop Ubuntu since they integrated the Unity desktop environment into the next release, which is pretty interesting, I think. And finally, the last new change was that you can now purchase applications in the Software Center, which was also a feature carried over to 10.04 LTS. And that's it. That is it. There's nothing different. <laughs> it's Well, I suppose that there are a couple of user interface changes, for example, the uh, theme itself had a slight tweak to its UI to kind of flatten itself up a little bit compared to 10.04 LTS. So we'll notice that change here in a little bit. But otherwise, that's all there really is to say about Ubuntu 10.10. .10. So what I thought I'd do for the remainder of the video is we would explore the website and its, well, predecessor 10.04 LTS and see what really changed because there is a little bit different in regards to the website which i think is worth pointing out so let's get to it so as you can see we have the website side by side here i know that ubuntu 10.04 lts is on the right i don't really care either all i'm doing is just briefly comparing the visual aspects of these websites and as you can see they could not be any more different so as you can tell, the Ubuntu logo was changed from the classic Ubuntu logo, which was used up until uh, Ubuntu 10.04 in terms of the website, and was now changed to a more modern, more aesthetically pleasing Ubuntu logo, I guess you could say. It's different. It looks nicer, more modern. I mean, it definitely doesn't feel as old as the old Ubuntu logo, which honestly didn't feel old, but it pretty well traced its roots all the way back to the original. And I'm supposing that they're probably going to push that further ahead given enough time they'll probably redesign the Ubuntu logo once again but anyway one design aesthetic of the website is the color orange which they briefly used as you can see here on the 10.04 website there was a lot uh, of white and you know tan space but there was the orange accent color but with the different 
website here with the newer one is you can see orange is a more predominant color and I believe in the more modern websites they still do that too but one thing that's interesting I think they still or they did this up until quite recently actually their background on the website was this uh, black and white dotted pattern sort of thing I don't know what they would call this stuff some kind of background or backdrop or something also there's a lack of attention with that particular piece of art there with a the computer around it what did you do canonical why does that look so cheap i don't even know either way funny enough when i was trying to find this website i kept running into the release candidate sites which i think was kind of funny so if i go back here oh well, there's a sneak peek at the uh, unity interface and the netbook edition if i go back here and we'll just go to like April 28th, we'll say. Uh, you see, I got this um, release candidate thing here for 10.04, even though I found the final 10.04 LTS website. I thought that was kind of funny. And then interestingly, on the 10th of October, I got another release candidate website. And you would think that on October 10th, they'd have the final Ubuntu 10.10 .10 released. You, you know, you'd think. But once this loads here and... I don't know what's going on with the Wayback Machine. It tends to be slow on some snapshots, so give it a few seconds here. There we go. See, it get, we get the release candidate. I don't know why I keep running into release candidates today, but that just seems to be the thing. Interestingly, there was two days left for Ubuntu 10.10's release, according to the snapshot, which I don't understand how, even though this was taken on October 10th, 2010, whatever. Anyway, so... With those having been compared, let's go ahead and get on with the rest of the video. Yes, yes, I know VMware. You want me to upgrade to Fusion 11. I'm gonna have to wait on that for now, so we're just gonna go ahead and say skip this version and get on with it. And of course it opens on the wrong screen. Of course it does. Well, you're not missing out on much so far. Let me get this over here. There we go, and full screen to go. I don't think the splash screen is anything to write home about. It's probably just going to load in text mode like it did for my testing. Yep. Nothing fancy. <coughs> oh, no. Host system management bus controller not enabled. Not like that's going to stop me. <laughs> that's a common thing with VMware and Ubuntu. They tend to do that. It's nothing new. Also, nothing new is the fact the screen resolution is 800 by 600. Oh, yeah, I forgot. This is a notable difference. There's a new install splash screen thing here with new icons for trying Ubuntu or directly installing Ubuntu, which is nice because 10.04 LTS, as you know, pretty much was imageless. There was a lot of boring text and whatnot. It just didn't look really pleasing at all to the end user. So I'm going to do a little bit of a different tactic today. I'm going to go into the live environment first, and then I'm going to increase the screen resolution so I can actually see what I'm doing because... It, honestly, it's really hard to see what I'm doing when I have 800 by 600 resolution, and I'm sure most people would agree. So let's just go ahead and fix that here. Uh, this won't take too long. There we go. That's much better. So let's get on with the installation process, and let's see what's new with Ubuntu 10.10 .10 from Canonical themselves, and not Wikipedia notes, of course. <laughs> so the installation process is a little bit different, as you can see. It now has little check marks that let you know if you're plugged into a power source, connected to the internet, and have at least 2.6 gigabytes of available drive space. Interestingly, there's an option to download updates while installing. I almost wonder if that still works. I don't think so, but we're going to go ahead and check the box anyway and see if we crash the installer. Just for the lulls. I don't think that's going to actually work, but you know, you, you never know. You never know. Interestingly, up in the status tray, there's a little status for your network, or status uh, thingamajig for your network, which lets you know if you have network traffic going out or in. Interesting. Also, what's interesting is that this is heavily simplified. It now just gives you the option to erase and use the entire disk or specify the partitions manually, uh, as opposed to the older release that uh, <laughs> just showed the, part the partitions in a little bar thing. So... Interest. Oh, they still do, in a way. Just a lot prettified, I guess. So yeah, this is going to be the disc. Use the entire thing. That's fine. And interesting, this is another change, is that it starts installing right away in the background as soon as it's got the partition made, which saves time while you're going to fill out all of the rest of the registration information. 
and it is on a roller coaster. Oh my goodness. I haven't even gotten to put in my information yet. It's almost done. Holy moly. Of course, this wouldn't have been the case for machines back in the day. My name is Jordan Woolery. An interesting late picks up. I'm using a virtual machine. Sneaky VMware. <laughs> we're just going to go ahead and just... Uh, we're just going to say Jordan VM. I don't really know. And there we go. Thank you for choosing Ubuntu 10.10. .10. This version brings some exciting changes, including a new sound menu, the Shotwell Photo Manager, and features that make it even easier to find and install new software. While Ubuntu is installed, this slideshow will show you around. And finally, we have arrows. Yay. Ubuntu Software Center gives you instant access to thousands of free open source applications. Browse categories including education, games, graphics, and science. Software is easy to find, easy to install, and easy to remove. Ubuntu is ready for all your gadgets. Just connect your phones or cameras to get started. Shotwell makes it easy to organize your digital photos and share them on Picasa, Facebook, or Flickr. For advanced photo editing, you can find more free applications in Ubuntu Software Center. Interesting that they advertise their Software Center again to find more software that doesn't come with the operating system. Good thinking there. That's actually not a bad idea. Look at that old HTC Android phone. Holy crap. I think it must have been running like Android 2.1. Jeez, that's old. Of course, that's advertising Ubuntu 1. We're not going to worry about that. And we can't complete this stupid slideshow again because installation is finished. As always, because my MacBook Pro is just that, that's just that much faster. Anyway, let's go ahead and restart now, and and we'll get into the operating system itself. By the way, um, Easter egg for future videos, this background was repeatedly used in a couple of future Ubuntu releases, so the thumbnails are going to look a little different comparative to the more modern ones. I try not to use the boring default ones just because I wanted to change things up a little bit. So going forward, we're not using the system default um, we're going to be using some different looking wallpapers that come with each release. So, um, I don't know what we're doing. We're stuck on this default wallpaper now. Dang it, I cursed the operating system by talking about the wallpapers. Gabe Newell, you did this. God damn it. Oh. <laughs> Just press enter. Everything fixes Ubuntu when you press enter. That's the solution. Sounds good to me. And wow, that started up quickly. <laughs> that started up very quickly. All right, so let's get into this here. So, looks like Ubuntu Desktop Edition. Oh, okay, so there's just the standard stuff. I thought there was going to be like a sneak peek of Unity in there, but no. Also, it's not 11.1 clock. You need to get your things straight. Like, why are we only showing three digits of the clock? <sighs> you would think these things are more battle-tested than they actually are. Thanks. Also, thanks, you, f you screwed my screen resolution again. I hate when you do that. I'm gonna the screen resolution yet again. Mm. All right, so here we are at the desktop of 10.10. .10, and I figure I'll get into that Easter egg now before too late about the whole 10.10 .10 thing. So, interestingly, Ubuntu 10.10, .10, you know, it was obviously released on the 10th of October 2010, which would make it 10.10.10 .10 on the date, which is pretty funny. Interesting fun fact, though, if you've ever read The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which I actually haven't personally, which you know, probably will surprise a bunch of people, but I actually haven't. But anyway, in that, in that series, or at least in something inside of that series, there was a joke to the binary 101010, which equals 42, which if you've ever read that book, it's basically the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything. So there's your Easter egg for the day. Basically... The version number of the operating system, the date it was released, and the year it was released, it all coincides to equal 42. Ironic, isn't it? <laughs> I, I thought that was kind of funny, too. I don't know. That's just me, and I'm easily amused. All right, so enough smack talk. Let's go ahead and get into the rest of this. So first things first, we always usually open Firefox, so let's do that now. And, of course, we don't have a very exciting start page. I believe... This was running some flavor of Firefox 3.6, 3.6.10. As you know, in Ubuntu 10.04 LTS, we're running a much later version of Firefox. I think we're running like Firefox 10. So this is more representative of the kind of experience you would have seen when Ubuntu 10.04 LTS came out for the first time. You would have seen this particular style of interface. 
the buttons would have looked a little different same thing with the font but otherwise everything else would pretty much look the same so that makes sense and i believe in the next release would be the very first time that firefox 4 was debuted on linux or at least mainstream linux so yeah so we could have gotten it sooner but you know you know how these things go so interestingly so I, I swear these icons look different but they're probably not it's probably just me i don't know <laughs> it's been a while since i've gotten back into this stuff if i'm going to be honest obviously you're not going to be able to tell because you're watching this video after it's been edited but you know it's been about a week or so since i've done this stuff so of course so this is the software center and it looks like the featured program was not showing anymore let's look at movita media center Available from the universe source. Let's use that source. And we gotta put in our password. Of course we do. Linux doesn't make anything easy for you. You always have to put in your password. And it doesn't work anyway because guess what? No more access because of course Maverick Meerkat's obviously out of date. No surprise, no surprise. I'm surprised this is even loading for one thing, but I suppose that the uh, software list is already compiled, but Oh, well, it doesn't really matter too much, I suppose. Which is unfortunate, but again, given the age of this operating system, it kind of makes sense. So given that, let's go ahead and explore the photo manager, which is now Shotwell Photo Manager. And, uh... Can apparently import from a folder, drag and drop photos, and connect to camera and import. Very nice to know. So there's our interface. What version is this? Shotwell version 0.7.2. And rather interestingly, they show a picture of a street sign. I don't know where this is, actually. Um, where it has Shotwell and then the 400 with an arrow on top of it. Not familiar with where this location is. Probably someplace in Europe, if I had to guess but that's about all the guesses I can take because I don't personally know. But other than that, I mean, the font looks a little, a little different. Um, it, you know, maybe my eyesight's just a little weak, but I might have noticed some new icons. I really couldn't tell you the difference. This is probably a newer release. If I had to guess, might not be, I don't know. And, you know, everything else to me pretty much is the same. I can't think of anything else. I guess we can take a look at the video editor since I haven't done that yet. It uses a program called Pi TV or PitiV. I don't know how you're supposed to say that. What version is this? Pi TV or PitiV version 0.13.5. I wonder if that website actually still loads. Probably not in Firefox 3.6 though. Oh, it actually does. Interestingly, it does. Apparently they're releasing 1.0. Man, that's a far cry from what we're seeing right now. I mean, if you think about it, they've come a long way from version 0.13.5. So clearly there's been a lot of effort put into that. I almost wonder if that would actually work in a Ubuntu derivative, or if they still actually include that in their software center today. Not sure. But anyway, I believe that's about it. I can't think of anything else that I could check out on this OS. Maybe there's a gradient here on this menu bar, but other than that, that's really it. There's literally not too much in the way of this OS and anything new. About what I've showed you is about what's new. So that really isn't terribly exciting. So with that having been said, I'd like to uh, thank you all for watching this video. I'm gonna go ahead and shut this down now and I'll see you all in the next one.